Welcome back. Uh, in this lesson, wireframe management part two, I'm going to move forward and discuss additional areas of interaction design that you need to be careful of when you're working with it. And I'm going to give you again several tips and techniques that allows you to create efficient layouts. So the agile approach to wireframing, right? you ought to ask yourself what's the level of detail I need to communicate effectively so here you are with a project at hand you're creating a website the management has given you this task as an interaction designer so you need to ask whether I want to start with napkins right so I want to create a storyboard a theme using my napkins or my sticky notes for example or a chart paper do I want to draw it by hand? I want to use whiteboards, paper sketch, or at a higher level, for example, tools such as ProtoShare, Balsamic, online software, and so on. So you need to ask all of these questions before you, in fact, go about starting your wireframing. And of course, at the top of the pyramid is the detailed wireframes. And this again, takes you several days and even months to end up creating a nice looking wireframe but these are important steps especially if you're taking an agile approach to wireframing which means detailed approach right and make sure that you don't miss anything while you're creating this particular theme so wireframes are made to be thrown away by the way there are steps in the process of design only the final one stays until it gets developed. So as you write these sticky notes, you create different elements on the screen, on the canvas, say you don't, you don't like it, delete it, okay? That's a good practice. Otherwise, you're gonna have so much of information on a simple layout that you would not know what to do. So if you don't like it, throw it away, start over. Okay, that's why it's an iterative process. In other words, they can be delivered as documentation, but they're not for most of the process. So if you want to save it, fine, save it for your records only, okay? But not for the final deliverable. So keep that in mind when you're creating and working with wireframes. The intermediate steps are also valuable, by the way, because they support communication and consensus. So let's say you create 10 different home pages, right? And each page contains various layouts and elements, although using the same theme, although you've used the principles of design, but there may be other project managers or senior management that they may want you to change certain things within those. So those steps in between are important. So if you save them, that's great. You need to save them so that you can revisit them. Throwing away does not mean you delete them permanently. It just means that you don't pay attention to them you just reiterate or keep on iterating the process and if management comes up with a new task in between maybe they have a new idea all of a sudden so it's easy for you to incorporate that idea within your in between steps so for example at each step you can test the journey you can discuss it with management you can discuss with technical team and share with other parties. So it is not a solo project, by the way. Interaction designer, they communicate well with other team members because a website, for example, or a product that you're designing, for instance. Okay, let me give you a um, different example from a website. Let's say you are a car designer, right? And here you are, you've designed this nice prototype, you love the design of the new car, and you don't want to share it with anyone, right? Because you love it. Well, that's not the case. So you want to share it with people because you will get more ideas, you will get more input. And all of that in input is important for the end result. Remember our first characteristic of interaction design is set your goals, know your objectives. And finally, the iterative process is observe, 
think or do, or rather it's do, observe, and think, which is the dot loop, okay? So do, observe, and think, and keep that cycle going while you're building your wireframes. So I just wanted to quickly talk about additional wireframe management tips and techniques that will allow you to further your designs and your layouts. So I hope this helps. Let's move to the next lesson.